Exercise 1, Inventor Professional 2018. In this exercise, we're going to build what you see up there on the screen. That was my previous version of 2017 that I worked on. Um, but today we're going to take a look at the latest version. So let's begin. First of all, if you want, you could actually grab the manual if you go to vertanu1.com. V is Victor, E R T A N U X, one, and dot com. If you go here, you could go to the instructional manuals tab and find the Autodesk Inventor manual. I usually try and update it every so often. This one is dated from 2016, but needless to say, there's uh, not a whole lot of changes that are going to take place, but my plan is to eventually get that updated to tw this new version in 2018. Uh, in the manual, you'll see lots of information, um, and what you can do is eventually what we're looking to get to with this exercise is on page 14. And this has all the dimensions and so on and so forth that you'll need to build this. So let's begin. First of all, we're going to go up here to New. And if you're a brand new user, you get two little boxes that appear usually that I'm you're not seeing on my screen. Just hit... Uh, Instead of learn inventor, go ahead and hit uh, start immediately. I can't remember exactly what it says, but anyhow, you eventually want to get here. Now, you'll see there's templates. There's English and there's metric and there's mold design. We're looking for English, standard IPT, and hit create. We have a new part file started. Some of the options I'd like to share with you that I use are, first of all, if I go up to the top here to file, you could go to at the very bottom there's an options menu and in here you'll see lots of different options in particular go to the colors tab I usually go with presentation and set this to one color and that is easier for my students to look at um, then I go to the display settings and I turn on use application settings Go to the settings tab here and bring up this menu and then from here you could go ahead and select model edges one color and black again this is my preference you could set it to whatever you like and then visual style set it to shaded with edges I also like to turn on the ground shadows object shadows um, ground reflections things like that that always is very nice to see and then that's about it right here. I hit OK. Uh, there are some additional settings in here, like the quality display. You can set smoother. However, performance-wise, if you have a tablet that might not have a lot of processing power as far as graphics, you might want to set that lower. And it will en enhance the speed versus the actual image quality. But that's it for right about now. Let's hit OK. And now we're going to go ahead and if you hit the little arrow to the left of the origin folder on the left, first of all, this is called your browser. At the very top, you have your ribbon. These tabs are the ribbon tabs. And up, up here, you have some additional options, which we'll all go through as we work on our part. But first of all, hit the little arrow to the left of origins, and you'll see there's planes, X, YZ, XZ, and XY. These are your paper that you're going to sketch on. We're going to go ahead and start by sketching on our, uh, we'll go ahead and sketch on the XZ plane. And when you click on it, you could either go up here to start 2D sketch. Don't use the 3D sketch just yet. Um, that's in another exercise in the future. Uh, go, or else you could right here, go over here to create sketch, this little button. This is a quick launch button that appears. It's very useful you'll see that your screen automatically orients and you see a crosshairs in the center the center point there that's in my case it's yellow that's the origin don't delete it make sure you don't never select it and delete it um, okay now what we're gonna do we're gonna go to the rectangle tool hit the little arrow underneath rectangle and anytime there's an arrow that indicates that there are other options to choose from we're looking for the two-point rectangle select it now move your pointer to that origin in the center and in my case I get a green dot again that's because I have mine set up for presentation yours may vary depending upon what colors you selected 
But once you get the green dot, go ahead and click one time and release it. Now move your pointer to the upper right area here and you'll see some dimensions appear. You could dimension this after you drop it or you could dimension it right now. You can see in blue up here the 0.475 is ready to have a value added. So I'm going to go ahead and put in 3 and then move your pointer to the vertical dimension there. In my case it's the 0.651. Click and you'll already see it's starting to stretch out your geometry. Go ahead and type in, in this case, 5. You don't have to type in the 0 .000, just 5 if, it's, if that's all it is. Hit enter on your keyboard. Now, over here you'll see you could click on top and it will automatically orient your view. Okay, so this little box is a view orientation box. In fact, if you go to the home button, which we're going to use soon, you'll see it will automatically orient you to more of an isometric view. And you could ch change that to different things. But go ahead and make sure you click on the top. And in this case, now it's upside down. There are these little rotation buttons for clockwise and counterclockwise. Go ahead and click on the counterclockwise arrow two times and it will rotate in 90 degree increments. Okay, here we have our profile. Go ahead and hit finish sketch, the checkbox up here. And now we could go to Extrude. Now if you don't see a decent preview here, go over here and click on the Home button again, and that will give us a nice isometric preview. Now we could see this directional arrow is available, which we could grab and conceptualize if we need to. Or over here on the left, you may not have this, but hit this little arrow if you don't see this box here, the Extrude box. And you'll see you could extrude by distance, mid-plane, or they call it symmetric, and different things are here. Um, what we're looking to change is primarily just the distance. So keep it at distance and set it to 0.5, and that will be our wall thickness. Go ahead and hit OK. Now what we can do is let's go back to the top view orientation. Click on the top of the box. Select this face. And you can sketch on the left there on those planes that are given to you, but in this case we want to sketch on the surface of the model. So any flat surface you could sketch on. So over here you'll see there's some options. First of all, don't just click yet. Just glide over and you'll see Edit Extrude. That would edit that half inch dimension. We could put in a different value if we wanted. Make it one inch if we wanted. This would edit the original sketch. You see the dimensions appear for the, the height and width. So we don't want to edit that. There's share sketch. That would be to move it on to another thing. Uh, we're not going to do that. And then there's create sketch. That's what we're looking for. Go ahead and click on create sketch. Okay. Again, we're kind of on the upside down here. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this counterclockwise. And now we could go ahead and click on rectangle once again. Now you'll see here, you could snap to that lower left corner once again. Now we're going to make a boss here over this edge. So go ahead and get, glide over this edge here and you might have to let it sit there for a second and you'll see it will highlight the edge. It's snapping to it. Um, that Because it's snapping to it we don't have to add in a value especially if it's the intent is that it's going to be the same width as the block that's below it. Thus this is snapping to it. They're both going to always be the same. So that's good. Now as far as the dimension below it, the 1.82, we're going to skip that for a second and just click on this edge because I want to show you how to put in a dimension manually. So we've went ahead and we added this rectangle here. Now let's go up to the top here and you'll see the dimension tool. Go ahead and select dimension. Now select the bottom edge and then move your pointer. Now don't be, don't be afraid if you see this 3 inch dimension. We're not done yet. Move the tip of the pointer to the top edge of that rectangle you just drew. When it turns color, click and then drag this to the right. And now center your dimensions. It's a good practice to just make sure you center your dimensions so they're easier to read. Go ahead and move it away from the edge about where mine is. Click and type in 1.5 and hit enter. Or you could hit that green check mark. Now it's constrained to that specific height. Okay, let's go back to isometric here. And we can now go to extrude once again. So you could hit finish sketch. Inventor also lets you click on 3D model and just go right to extrude if you like. 
Now, it typically will take the proper profile, but if you have multiple profiles or nested profiles, you have to go in and select them. In this case, we don't have to do that. But you can see, again, we could adjust this value. We're going to keep it at the 0.5. Go ahead and just hit OK. All right. Now, we want to place a hole on this surface. So there is the hole tool, but we're not going to cover that just yet. That's in future exercise. It's a little bit more advanced. Don't want to cover it just yet. But we are going to go ahead and click on this face and start a sketch. Now, once again, if, if you don't like working upside down or in this, remember, with a part, it really is dependent upon you if you could work that way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rotate it two times here again, counterclockwise. And this time, I'm going to go to the circle tool and glide my pointer over this upper left quadrant of this block. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag out the circle and type in, before you click a second time to complete it, type in 0.75. That way we don't have to go to the dimension tool later. And hit enter on your keyboard. Now we actually do have to go to dimension because we have to position its location. Click on dimension. And the first location we're going to position it off of is this edge. So how far is the center of that circle going to be from there? Well, we want it to be approximately one inch. So click on the edge and then move your pointer to the center point of that circle and click again. Drag this up and click to drop it. Type in one for one inch and hit enter. It should automatically reposition one inch off of the left edge. Now, we also need to position it either from the bottom or the top. So let's go ahead and select the center point, and really the order doesn't make a difference, but select the center point of the circle, move to the top edge now, and once that changes color, click and drag to the left, again centering your dimensions. That's just good practice. Um, just sloppy dimensions make for a difficult drawing. So click to drop it and make that one, and hit enter. Now we could hit finish sketch and once again go to extrude. Now that we have multiple profiles, you're going to have to go in and actually select inside that nested profile there, which is the circle. You'll see it will turn like a salmon color, at least in my case. Click. Now what it automatically has chosen to do is extrude in the upward direction and add material. We actually want it to extrude down and remove it. So on the left here, in the Extrude dialog box, you have the ability to do a couple things. If you flip the direction, sometimes it's smart enough to automatically know that there's a solid below it and cut it. Otherwise, you have to select Cut. And in this case, actually it did um, if I rotate this. Now, rotate dynamically. I did not share this with you. If you hold the Shift key, hold it down, don't let go, and then the scroll wheel, the wheel that's on your mouse between the left and right mouse buttons, there's a wheel. That wheel will actually by itself zoom in and out, but if you push it down as if it's a button and hold it, now you'll see that little icon change for your pointer. Move the mouse left, move it right, up and down, and now you're dynamically rotating. Again, the shift key needs to be depressed while you do this, while you actually hold down the mouse. There is a rotate button over here on the right, so you could use that as well. Then you hit escape to get out of it, but either one is fine. Let's go ahead and hit OK, and now we have our hole. Now here's the thing. Let's say we wanted to edit this part. A change comes down from the uh, corporate ladder. We need to thicken this part to 0.75, at least this part. What we can do, rather than going in and making it too complex, hit escape a couple times on your keyboard in the upper left corner. Double click, and sometimes you actually do get the dimensions to appear. I'm not getting them, but what you can do if, if it doesn't appear, you can go over here. Now here's edit sketch. Now that We'll edit the length and width. That's not what we want, but there is Edit Extrude. Go ahead and select Edit Extrude. Now, over here, we could type in 0.75. Hit Enter. And it should automatically thicken that model, at least that one extrude. Notice this one is still 0.5. So, with that being said, 
How about that hole? Let's take a closer look. Unfortunately, the hole no longer goes through. Design intent is something, is basically your plan on how this should update, especially when design changes come down, because design changes always come down. So, could we have done this better? Well, yes. This is what you could do. You could right click on that surface of the hole. And then you'll find you have the ability to um, do a couple things. Um, actually, we don't, uh, don't uh, hit escape, actually. My apologies. Just click on the surface. And remember, we have edit extrude. Let's go ahead and edit that. We always want this to be a through hole. So what we should or could have done is in the upper left here, instead of setting an explicit value, which is the distance setting, hit the little arrow to the right of it and find all. That will ensure that it goes through all or everything. So it's a through all condition. So just remember that that can be useful sometimes. So that way we don't have to ever go back and edit features. And that's something they call design intent. Okay, let's say we want to change this back. Um, again, you could just click on it, and you could edit that feature. There's also the undo buttons up here, but um, let's just edit the original extrude again so you get some practice here. And go ahead and set it to 0.5. You'll see if you hit the little arrow to the right of it, you actually have the ability. It saves the settings that you had earlier. So we could select 0.5 and hit OK, and it's back to normal. All right, let's finish this off with a couple more features. Go ahead and click on Home again. Now, we want to sculpt this, make it look a little more complex. So first of all, find the Fillet tool. Fillet puts a radius or a round on things. A couple different names for a fillet is a radius, a blend, or it could be referred to as a round, depending upon what CAD system you're using. But here, it's called a fillet. So let's set the radius to point, let's see, 75. And now move your pointer to the edge and think of it this way. It would be the edge that you would hit with a file if you were going to file this down to smooth out that sharp edge. So this edge, go ahead and select it. And you'll see it will break the edge and put a nice big round in there. Go ahead and repeat that on this one edge. Don't go all the way around the part now just this edge here. Okay. Now if we want, we don't like what we see, we could always type in 1 here and you'll see it will update. So let's go ahead and change that to 1. And you could hit apply or just hit OK because we are pretty much done with the fillet tool there for right now. But just remember the fillet tool is a very nice tool that helps you put a radius, round, blend, whatever you want to call it. Now let's try a chamfer. A chamfer is an angle. Go ahead and click on chamfer. And we're going to set it to, we'll keep it at 0.125. Make sure to type in 0.125 if you don't have that. Now you have the ability to have a distance to distance, distance and angle, and two distances. Let's set it to distance, and it will just take the general 0.125. Now what we can do is select the actual edge, again, that we want to break. Click on this edge. You'll see it will propagate along the tangent face, that's when we have an arc attached to a straight face or line. That's tangency. And there is actually an option in there that will you could turn it off. But uh, notice it doesn't carry all the way around. So you would have to select individual edges if you want that. But just that one edge we have. Go ahead and select this one now. And hit OK. Now hopefully you remember how to rotate. I'll give you a hint. The Shift key and the wheel on your mouse. Push it down, hold it, hold both buttons down, and move left, right, up, and down. And look at that. We now have a very nice sculpted part. We're not quite done yet. Go ahead and practice rotating a little bit. It's very important to learn how to rotate and manipulate the model so that you could see what you need to see, thus being able to do the work you need to do. So with that being said, the last feature we're going to add here is the shell feature. Imagine we want to make a thin walled plastic part. Shell is perfect for this. Go ahead and select shell. The wall thickness should be 0.06. That's a set over here. 
Now, don't hit OK yet. You'll see a preview. It's shelling everything internally. But we want to also open up certain faces. To open up the faces, glide over them, hold Shift, and select them. And you'll see you're going to click on this face, this one on the right, and this one here. Release the Shift key, and you could hit OK. And now we have our shelled out model. So you can select multiple faces to be shelled. That actually completes the model, but what I'd like to do is go through and show you some of the photorealistic rendering abilities. The capabilities inside Inventor here are pretty decent. They, uh, they, are, they come automatically with the software, so it's nothing extra that you have to procure but we'll go through changing some of the colors and the reason why you'd want to do this is for marketing or for uh, in your case maybe you're a student and you want to make a portfolio portfolios are game changers in industry if you just put down on a resume that you know the software that's one thing but to actually provide a portfolio sets you above the rest so this actually can be one of the most valuable tools you're going to learn um, aside from modeling so let's take a look here. First of all, we want to change this part to something that's more like a polished silver. So without anything selected, you could go right to the top here to the default button. You'll see there's a tremendous amount of materials to select from. I'm going to go ahead and find, there's no there's a machined aluminum, which is okay. If you want to try it, you could go ahead and click on it. and it doesn't look anything particularly different than what I had. Uh, maybe a little bit of a glare coming off of it. But if you pick some of the polished materials, so for example, um, we should be able to find, let's see here, alphabetically, if we go to chrome, there we go. There's a chrome polished blue, or chrome polished black, or just chrome polished. Go ahead and select that. And now you're starting to make it look a little bit more sophisticated. Okay, another setting that really helps, especially for portfolio, is go to the View tab. Set your model. Don't generally work in perspective. It's a bit, it's a bit challenging for most people. You can, but um, I would recommend perspective more for your portfolio pieces. It creates a vanishing point. It gives it a more realistic appearance. So go ahead and select that. Uh, and I'm just zooming in and out with my scroll. I'm pointing where I want to zoom up to and scrolling. You could use the buttons up here as well. You could go to isometric. Okay, I kind of like this view right here though. I think that looks pretty good. And then if you release shift and just push down the middle button, you also have pan. Hold down that the, the wheel. So the wheel can pan by itself if you just depress it. It could zoom in and out if you scroll it and holding shift it could rotate dynamically. Now let's go over here to visual style. You'll see there's realistic and that will give it a much more pleasant appearance. Mine is set to automatically turn on ray tracing. Yours is probably not. I set that up earlier in my tools options in the very beginning of the video. Before, you, before I actually made the video. So um, note that you could turn ray tracing on or off. It gives it a much more realistic appearance. I'm gonna turn it off here, and there we could just see it without the ray tracing enabled. Uh, you have the ability to turn on a ground plane. Um, I don't think that really adds a lot of value in this case, but sometimes it could look nice. Notice under visual style, there's a lot of different options here. Shaded shade with edges. Shade with edges is what we had on as a default. But let's set a couple more things here. How do I change the color of the hole? Pre-select the hole just by clicking on it. And when I say click, I mean the left mouse button. Okay, now go up here to the materials again. And let's say we want to make that copper polished. Go ahead and select it. And there it is. Let's make these surfaces copper colored as well. Now, to get those, there's a couple things you could do. You could hold Shift to select multiple faces. Or here's the easy way. Find the chamfer feature 
in the browser on the left. Click on it. By the way, if you lose your browser, a lot of students have a tendency to close it. Um, it's actually under view and you go to user interface and you could turn your browser back on. Oh, actually, it seems as though they might have changed it. Maybe they call uh, one of the other bars here. It looks like they might have modified it. Also, this little button here, um, it could be a wonderful tool or it could be a source of frustration. Some of you might accidentally click on it and then all of a sudden discover, oh my gosh, all my tools have disappeared on my ribbon. Don't panic. Just click on it a couple times again and you'll see it's for optimizing your ribbon. Keep clicking on it and eventually it will return your, your uh, ribbon back to normal. Okay, just some little words of advice. Anyhow, let's go back. The chamfer tool, click on it one time. Now go back to the Chrome and select Copper Polished again. And now you can click somewhere on the screen. Another thing that really adds or enhances an image is when you add, you break these sharp edges because if you look at these edges, they're a little bit sharp. In reality, it's very difficult to make it look exactly like that. If you break the edge, give it a nice, it gives a nice reflection back, a different shade, and it enhances it. It's kind of like putting makeup on it. And here's how. Go back to the 3D model tab on your ribbon. Go to the fillet tool and set it to a very small radius, like 0 0.005. Or maybe even if you want to big, dress it up a little bit more, 0.01, which is 10 thousandths of an inch. Now select these edges here and here, and the edge of the hole, and this edge here. With those edges selected, now some uh, CAD systems actually automatically, there's a button that will automatically do this for you. I don't know if Inventor has that, I'll be honest. Um, it may, but I'm not sure. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now look at the beautiful reflections you get off of there. OK, one next, the next item here. Go back to View, and let's ray trace it again. Click on Ray Tracing. Now ray tracing, over on the right here, you'll see this box appear. The low quality uh, removes some of the shadowing effects. Um, and things like that. It's a very quick way to look at the image. There are other settings in there though. If you go to draft, it takes longer, but it will enhance the image a little bit more. As you can see, it takes quite a bit longer. In fact, if you were to do a control alt delete and go to the task manager, you would bring this little window up and it would tell you what type of microprocessor you have. And in this case, I have 12 cores and 24 logic processors, which are another name some people call them threads. Not to be confused with what you see here, the threads 3000, but um, and it's a Xeon processor. You can click on open resource monitor and actually bring up even more information showing all the different CPUs that are running. And you can see right now, as this is running through, we see the, the bar moving across. Um, all the utilization, the mic the multi-threading capabilities are they're, they're being fully taken advantage of here and you can see now that's going to drop off because it just completed the rendering okay also you could look up your memory resources and all these neat things on there um, many computers they all vary some only have four cores some of them have one core so depending upon how many cores you have the faster it's going to go. The more cores, generally the faster. There is something to be said for the uh, clock speed as well, but that being said, here you can see it looks very nice. Now, there was one more setting in there, the high, and this takes a long time. Be prepared to wait around for, uh, depending upon the quality, uh, that, you know, or the complexity of the image. It could be literally like minutes to hours. And you can see here, this will smooth it out Again, it, it, it really makes it a more realistic appearance and things like that. So um, right now it doesn't look particularly great, but once you start getting the bar farther along here instead of rough, um, you'll see it uh, looks good. But at any point, you could actually pause it, and then you could actually take a screenshot of it. If you hold Alt Print Screen, which is the Alt key, which is just 
to the left or the right of your spacebar, as well as the print screen key, which is in the upper right keys of your keyboard, you could capture that image. Or you could save it right here as a PDF, or I'm not PDF, but as a um, JPEG and or bitmap or whatever you want to save it as, and then drop it into a Word document and make your portfolio that way. Okay. Now, that's about it for this exercise one, but if you look in the manual, there are more labs for you to work on. So once you get past this, as I say, now try the labs that are given. Now be aware, I put in a note here, we don't learn patterns and arrays until the next lesson. So um, I want you to work on the labs without using those tools. But I'll show you a little bit. Uh, maybe I will show you a pattern here. So if you want to hang on, you might want to pause. My recommendation is you pause and give yourself a chance to try and model these on your own. If you find that you're stuck, then unpause my video and continue on and you can see how both of these are made. So you can see here we have the L1 for Lab 1 and Lab 1B. And it's a little bit more complex, but really not all that dissimilar to what we just worked on. So everything that you've just learned, you could apply. Okay, so at this point you could pause, otherwise keep going and you can watch the video and I'll show you right now how to make those other parts. Okay, go to New, Standardized Part, and Create. By the way, if you wanted to save these, like typically I recommend you save them as E1 for Exercise 1, E2 for Exercise 2. When it's a lab, L1, L L1B, things like that. That's kind of the nomenclature. So standard I part, hit create, and we could hit start 2D sketch. We're not even going to bring up those, um, the origin dialog box like we did. I mean, you could if you wanted, but click on there. And now you can see the planes. Remember, the planes are your paper to sketch on. I'm going to go ahead and this first one, I'll just sketch on the X, Y plane. And it's that, looks like a letter F. Now for that particular manual. If you want, you could download the manual right up here. You could even print it out if you like. Um, I'm going to go to download and it should download directly from Google Docs. Now you have a copy of it and you could click on it when it's ready and it will open up. And once it opens inside your browser, usually you have now the ability to go to that page scroll down here a little faster okay and right click and you should be able to rotate it counterclockwise and now you could see it just like this so it's a two by three and a half inch L shape and then we have all these other little things here so we're not going to use a rectangle tool we're gonna to have to use the line tool which we really didn't go through in the first lesson but it's kind of assumed that hopefully you know or understand that Okay, so let's go ahead and click, draw a vertical line straight up, and that line is supposed to be two inches in height. Zoom out, oops, until you could see it. And then this is approximately one inch. We could go back to the manual. If you have dual screens, it's really nice. You'd be able to see the manual and put these dimensions in. So the next dimension is one inch. So we could go across here, see how I'm snapping, and type in one, hit enter. Now I could draw the next one down, but let me go back to the manual. Now I don't have a dimension given specifically for that. You'll notice it's one inch off the bottom, so that would make it one inch from the top. Uh, we could put in a dimension, otherwise leave it blank and add it later. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go down here about one inch, click, drag across. This one's only like 0.75, so I could put in 0.75, or I could dimension it exactly like the print, which is a good thing to do usually. That way you eliminate mistakes if you use the actual print given to you. So I'm going to make it about 0.75 there, but I'm not going to type in the value. Otherwise, I'd lock it in, and I actually want 1.75 dimension baseline off of that. Now I'm going to go up here and look at how I could snap across there. I'm at the same vertical height click and drag this across. Again, I'm not going to put in a value. Click, drag this straight down. Make sure it goes a little bit lower this time. Click across here. Don't worry too much about the dimension. Make sure it's just horizontal. Drag it down, click, and then complete the line by snapping back to the original. 
There are fast keys, very similar to AutoCAD. You might be able to try it, like close, I think, a C. So I didn't do that there, but you might be able to do that. Go to Dimension, and now finish this off. So this bottom is supposed to be 3.5, and then we'll baseline from here, from this line to this line, and that is going to be 1.75, and I believe there's another baseline. Now remember, you can always click on front, and it will zoom to fit to some extent there. So we could go back here. This one is 2.5. So click on this edge here to this edge. Notice the colors are changing. It's changing to blue, but some of those lines are black right now. That indicator that it's underdefined, at least with the colors I selected. I'm going to click here 2.5. And the goal ultimately is to get it all one single color. That indicates once you've got it that way, that means that you've basically added all the dimensions and constraints necessary for that. Okay, so now from here to here, drag that out one inch. And then from here to here, I believe this is 0.875. I can verify that on the print. It's at 0.85. So to change dimension, Hit escape a couple times and double click on it and 0.85. And now you can see it's all one color. Drag the dimensions out so that they look nice. Look at how I have them stair step. Again, using rules, the common rules of drafting is your best bet here. Okay, now we could hit finish sketch, maybe zoom out or go to the home button so you can see what's about to happen. Go to extrude. This is supposed to be, I believe, yep, a half inch. So type in 0.5, hit enter, and you have just completed that part. Go ahead and save that and, and save it as, um, we'll call that L, capital L1. Okay, now you could dress this up a bit. Okay, just be careful. Don't dress it up so much that it's unrecognizable. But I say dress it up because if this is going to be a portfolio piece, the more complexity you add to it, the better, because people like to see that. And it's great practice. Go to fill it, and if you like, go ahead and you can fill it some of these edges. And look at this, you can grab that arrow and just eyeball the edges there. Look, you can even select through and hit apply. And then it keeps this open. That way we could put in smaller dimensions like 0.25. It's like these edges here and here, there, apply. And then maybe try a chamfer. And we'll stick with 0.125. That looks pretty good. There, there, and there. And now you've just made it look considerably more complex. It's still a very basic part, but um, you could even take it a step further. We'll make this point 0.1 and have it put fill it on both sides all the way around. Notice it stops when it hits the hard edges there. Okay. Or to make it a little more complex, edit that feature, right click on it, edit feature. Um, and if you want to deselect something, the control key, holding control and selecting the edge will deselect it. Now let's put one more fillet around here and here and these two. And rotate. Now I'm going to show you one thing that will look really neat. Flip it around and shell it. Go to shell. Uh, set it to a, something smaller, 0.06 maybe. Oh, and I hit enter too early. So it's hollow on the inside. It's just that I messed that up. So just go over to the browser on the left, right click, and edit feature. And all you have to do is select, um, actually go over here, you have to click on remove faces, select the face you want to open up, and hit OK. And now you have a shelled out part. Again, that's going to look a lot more impressive to a potential employer. Okay, uh, don't forget to save it. Now go to New, and we'll get to the last part. Hit Create, Standard I Part, Create. I'm going to go ahead and start my sketch, the 2D sketch. 
be careful, don't do the 3D sketch. 3D sketch is a nice tool, but we're not going to use that. Go ahead and select the X, Z plane, which is like your top plane, like if you're working on a tabletop. Select that. This one is a great part. And let me show you what it looks like, first of all. It's a brick with a hole and a couple holes in it, and it's symmetric. So that makes our life easy. It's five by three. Boy, doesn't that sound familiar? Five by three, but okay. Um, two point center. Five by three is the dimension we made the last the exercise. Okay, so three, and click over here by five. Okay, and from there, and now what you want to do, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, how we'll put in a hole here. Let's go to the circle tool and the upper left quadrant here, floating away from, make sure there's none of those center lines are selected or anything like that. Click and drag out a circle. Now, don't touch the center line. Stay away from that. This is actually supposed to be 5.5, 5, which is a half inch. So hit, type in 0.5, hit enter. Notice it's floating. Let's use the dimension tool to locate it. Select the center point after you select dimension. I click on this line here, drag it to the left, 0.75. Click on the center point again to the left edge, drag it up here, 0.75. Now you could go through and add that to all the dimensions or I'm going to show you how to mirror. Now mirroring is technically used in the next exercise and that's where you learn it formally but this is an informal one just so those of you who are more advanced might want to see this. I'm going to go to the line tool. I want to transform my lines into center lines so I'm going to go ahead and click up here to center line and now any line I draw will be a center line. Just got to remember to turn it off when you're done. Okay up here on that line click and drag down to the origin and connect when you get the dot. Drag it to the left now and once you get it out far enough click and then hit escape to get out of that. Now you'll see we have two center lines. Center lines are great for mirroring. You, they're essential for mirroring sketched geometry. Not solid geometry, sketched geometry. So like a circle. Perfect. Now make sure you turn off center line. Okay. Now to get this mirrored over go to the mirror tool and the first button, notice it's light blue. It means that it's depressed already. So select the item you want to mirror. In this case, click on that circle. Now click on the mirror line button. You'll see now it's blue and it has a little dashed line around it. Now select the center line you want to mirror across. Be aware you can only mirror across one center line at a time. You can't do them both, unfortunately, as far as I know. Click on the center line and now hit apply. Okay, now it's gone back to select. Now here's a cool little trick. With your pointer almost exactly where my pointer is, not on any edge, it's just floating in space and up in this upper left quadrant. Click and hold down and drag a fence to surround the two circles. Now be aware you could shift control both select circles, but we just want to select them in a group there. And now go to mirror line and select the horizontal center line hit apply and done. So that's mirroring. Let's go to finish sketch and we'll go ahead and zoom out. Maybe go to the home button and let's extrude that. So go to extrude. Select the profile. Notice before the, exer the exercise we completed earlier we put the hole in after we extruded the solid because then we extruded the hole. If you draw the holes in as nested profiles like we have here they will turn out as voids. Be aware though, it's very difficult if you get a nested feature inside of another nested feature, so that starts getting confusing a bit. But this is pretty easy. It took this automatically. We click on that. This needs to be 1.5. Hit enter, and now we have our brick. What we want to do is put that cut out in. Now there's a couple ways you could do this. The easiest way I would recommend, note if you look at the drawing, it's one inch cut deep by 1.5 wide. Since we use the center rectangle tool, we could use it again to center it automatically because everything's centered right now. So go ahead and click on the surface, 
click on the create sketch and you could leave it this way or if you prefer you could rotate it counterclockwise or clockwise go back to center or it's called two point center rectangle look at that it's dead center already drag this out connect to the edge and now go to dimension and dimension this line to this line and right in the middle there make it 1.5 it's centered already look at how easy that is now I'm gonna go back home up here in the upper right and now we just cut that so we hit finish sketch extrude wants to add material let's try clicking on cut extrude when you click cut extrude sometimes it's smart enough to go down and automatically start cutting so there are times though be aware always double check make sure it's going the right direction as well as it's cutting if that's your intent so there's the flip direction which is direction two as well as cut now the depth for this cut is only 1.0 so you could type 1.0 or 1 just make sure and you can see there it is hit OK alright and that's all that's required for the lab according to the drawing but again maybe dress it up a little bit go to fill it tool if you like Let's set it to 0.375 for the radiuses. Put some nice blends in on these edges. Okay. Um, you could go ahead and uh, put some on these edges on the inside. Hit apply. Now we could put some, um, let's see, that's pretty good there. I'm going to hit cancel. Let's go to chamfer and put in, uh, we could go 0.125, select this edge here this edge you could also put in countersinks and you know they don't have to be all the same but I'm just throwing it together really quick here apply and cancel now again for some of the colors you could go right up here one of my favorites is I think what it does really nicely in this software is uh, uh, the metal so for example um, we could go back to copper or um, if we go chrome, the chrome polish looks really nice. And then we could, you know, transform some of these to make them stand out a little bit better. So again, if we click on the chamfers, you know, in real life, it might not look this way, of course. But let's go with, um, let's say we went with dark green. See, just to mess it up a little bit. Okay. And just remember, if you go to view, you could go to orthographic, change it to perspective, which gives you a vanishing point makes it look more realistic as I talked about before and if you go to visual style you could go to realistic um, turn on ray tracing the little button up here if it doesn't automatically go to it and now you have yourself a wonderful portfolio piece again if you want to rotate um, shift in the middle button you could shell it out as well that's going to give you if you go to 3d model go to shell it's going to give you a nice uh, surface there and now it looks very complex. And you might want to even render that. So you go to view, realistic, ray tracing, and make sure it's on perspective. A little dark, but uh, there's lighting and things like that that you can play with. That might not be, uh, it's probably not a very good rendering right there. When you get too much of that in there, None of these that I'm making are particularly great, but uh, they're okay. Uh, when you get in an in industry, they're going to expect a heck of a lot more, but still, you can see that uh, this they can see the, the general modeling theory here. Okay, that concludes exercise one and lab one and lab one B.